You may recognize him from the Netflix hit series Dubai Bling, but this multi-talented MC, DJ, radio personality, and TV presenter is a force to be reckoned with on his own. And today we're here at his barber shop in Jumeirah. Let's go and meet the guy. Jasmine, come on. Welcome. Uh, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, so should I call you Marwan or DJ Bliss? Whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay. My mom. Marwan, yes, I'm let's gonna do call that. you for this interview. I'm okay. Going. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having us. Oh, no problem. I, is it weird for you to be in a men's barber shop? It is. I haven't been here for this amount of time. <laughs> this is our den. This is our man cave. This is where we come to chill, where we come to talk. Yeah. I think aside from the bathroom, this is maybe the only other place where it's just you and uh, yeah. you guys. You are the first Emirati DJ to go on world tour. Yes. And you are the first Emirati DJ to headline at Coca-Cola Arena, which is happening Sunday, March 19. I want to ask you a little bit about the industry. Now, this industry can come with its own set of troubles. What has being a DJ taught you? You know, the, the thing that I've learned is really that you cannot sit down and just think that you're good and, you know, expect that your work is going to continue. Like, you have to have all, you have to... Uh, recreate yourself you have to reinvent yourself you have to build relations with uh, venues you have to build relations with other DJs in the industry yeah um, you know together we can build an industry over here if everyone thinks hey I'm by myself and I'm gonna do this by myself or like start fighting with people and do that kind of stuff sure it might work for you for a bit but really as a team as a unit that's mm. where this industry can grow and not only dubai not only the uae i'm talking about the whole of the middle east or the whole of the arab world as a whole so how has your life changed after dubai bling has your dj career been impacted at all and if so how how has it been impacted so i've been like on tv and i've done radio and like i've been in sort of the spotlight with my dj stuff before but this is just a whole different type of spotlight you know do you feel it like it's opened more doors for you as a dj over here in my own city like it's yeah. definitely changed i i definitely think like this coca-cola arena uh a gig that i'm doing helped by having you know been on that show and i'm grateful for it you know i mean to be able to do a show in my own city pe people think that this happened overnight like people think like yo you just did a show and like yo this is now everything happened for you you don't understand like it took me 10 15 20 years to get to where I am to do that show to be able to, uh, you know, get the, to be in a position that I am. That's amazing to know. And I think that will really benefit young kids right now. You know, instead of like just seeing your success and then being like, oh, he just did it so fast. And yeah. you're like, no, wait, you didn't see the behind the scenes. Yeah. Would you do another reality show after the season two of Dubai Bling? Would you do something else? I mean, listen, I'm super happy with what's going on with Dubai Bling. You know, yeah. I, I don't think I could have like uh, been in a better situation. The fact that it has the city that I was born and raised in and yeah. that I'm from on the name of the show, like that, that relationship is amazing. The other thing I'm looking at is really touring, releasing music yes. more. Um, going out to do bigger shows and waving the flag for the city. Like I always tell people there's like every city or country you think of, if I named you any city, you would be able to name an artist. If I said Sweden, you could, but if we said UAE, like somewhere around the world, I want them to say, I mean, I know we have highly successful Arabic artists. When they say, you know, who's the guy for the UAE? And I want to like go there and I, like my dream is to go on this big stage and wave the UAE flag at yeah. a festival. I mean, speaking of UAE, I mean, at the end of the day, we can't deny that we're in a kind of conservative Middle Eastern country. Yeah. How, I was, I'm curious, how did your family react to, and your wife and yeah. your immediate family, how did they react to you wanting to become a DJ and wanting to pursue that passion? Yeah. yeah. Luckily, when I graduated, I got a radio job. So then I was on radio. So I went into media and I was DJing at the same time. So parents happy, now I've got a radio gig and I'm DJing. And then straight away from that, I went into TV. Yeah. And I opened my own company and I had employees, I had an office. My parents never really saw like a guy just DJing and sleeping all day and that's all I did. That's it worked great. out and uh, it was important. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to respect your culture. This is where we're from. You know, you cannot just say, hey, this is what I'm going to do and that's it. If you really want to do it and you're in a, I mean, my family are not, uh, I wouldn't call them like strict. This I think I think people ask because they watched Dubai Bling. So yeah. the edit was that there was, you know, some jealousy going on with you going out and 
and having those, uh, you know, the, the nightlife moments and everything. Were you a DJ before or after you got married? I was a DJ before I got married. Oh, yeah. okay, that's good. Yeah. So I, I, I always use that line. I'm like, you knew who I was when you we got married. You knew it. <laughs> you can't back out now. <laughs> I want to tell you one more thing about the last one before we yeah, uh, yeah. move on. Just recently, I went to my wife and I said, hey, you do know that I'm the first, like, Emirati guy on the show who also brought his wife on the show. So now let's talk about the other way around you know everyone always says you know how does your wife feel but no one ever says yo how do, how does no one goes to her and says how does your husband feel but i'm the one who actually brought her on to the show with me that's a very good point yeah so yeah how do you feel about her being on the reality show with you i don't have a problem with it i'm, I'm the one who brought her in you that's know great. i said so you guys like uh yeah are getting along on on the show behind the scenes everything I mean, I wouldn't say everything. <laughs> I would, I honestly, I promised myself I'm never gonna lie to people. Look, I mean, yeah. we have a great relationship. The marriage is great and all that, but like every marriage, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, I think on the show you see, that's why it's called reality. What advice would you give aspiring TJs? Someone who wants to go into your shoes? Mm. I would say it is tough right now. Yeah. Uh, and if you really want to do it, I know it's easy to, to be a DJ because now the equipment's a lot easier to get, the music's a lot easier to get, but uh, you really have to think about, you know, where this is going to go. It's, you know, don't look at it like, uh, don't be small-sided and just think about the next year or two years, like really the next five years, 10 years, like yeah. how big do you want to be? And I would say plan. Uh, and be aggressive with it, you know, be consistent, be persistent, and you know, give it your all. If it's something you love to do, it will always be successful. Do you feel like you have to be a little bit arrogant to get into this industry just because it's such a tough industry, or no? Should you stay humble? Yeah, I don't think you have to. I mean, look, I had my fair share of, you know, trying to, you know, uh, play that arrogant card, and yeah. I'll be honest with you, it, like, it, it didn't work. Yeah. Like, it backfires, you know? And sometimes people think you're arrogant. A lot of people meet me and they think, hey, oh my God, we thought you, we didn't think you were so nice. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, this persona you, persona you put on social media, and like, when we saw you, we thought you were, like, pretty arrogant. So people already probably they think their assumptions. Yeah, they think you're arrogant anyway so there's no need for it but like i said from my experience even the times where i thought maybe i should be a little arrogant it backfired it backfired like, just be yourself honestly that is that's also what i tell people just be yourself go into the room yeah. you own the room but at the same time you're there to make connections yeah so just remember that so just be yourself unless you're not a good person then don't be yourself <laughs> don't be yourself then just leave then be somebody go else <laughs> Marwan, thank you so much for having us today. Thank you. This thank you for coming. This conversation was a pleasure. You're you're a great guy in person. I don't know who. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, right? You yeah. gotta meet the person always. <laughs> Amazing, and we can't wait for our season two Dubai Blink to come out, and we can't wait for your concert on March 19th. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching.